So, who was the first engineer? I mean, the pyramids of Egypt are engineering marvels and so were the Roman aqueducts that brought in water from far away mountain streams all the way to Roman cities. There was the Greek analog computer called the Antikythera mechanism, and of course, all the many modern engineering achievements. Each of these items required someone to design them, an engineer, right? Well, it was the designer of the first Egyptian pyramid ever, who is often credited as the first engineer, and he has a name. See, these incredible structures have stood for greater than 4,600 years and were incredibly tall at over 480 feet at the tallest. This, quote, first engineer, designer of that first pyramid, was named Imhotep, and he was the chancellor to Pharaoh Djoser. At least, that's what many Google results will tell you oh so confidently as if it's a matter of fact, and I'd love to end it here and say it's so clear. He was the first true engineer, but unfortunately, it's not so obvious to me, and I think you'll agree. See, complex items have been designed and created, or engineered, long before the pyramids. So is the person who created the first ever quote engineered item who we should call as the first engineer? Or do we need to wait until the word engineering even exists in the world, in which case the term engineer has really only been in use since the 1300s? But what if we need proof that someone was referred to as an engineer while they were alive? The first person I could find as a named engineer came much later than that, and his name was John... No, no, no. John Smeaton. See, John was a self-proclaimed civil engineer from the mid-1700s who's famous for designing complex structures, improving the steam engine, and more. Though, John wasn't a graduate of an engineering program at a university since those didn't exist yet. So which school had the first engineering program, and do we know who graduated in that first class? There's many interesting options here, but back to the first claimed engineer, Emotep. Again, there's no doubt that these pyramids are feats of engineering, and the supposed designer of that first ever Egyptian pyramid was Emotep, the Pharaoh Djoser's chancellor. The specs of this first pyramid, now called the Pyramid of Djoser, was a six-tier stone step pyramid built in 2700 BC, and it stood 205 feet tall. The tallest pyramid ever built was the Pyramid of Khufu, and it stood at over 481 feet tall. And what I find crazy is that the pyramid was built around 2500 BC, and it stayed the tallest man-made structure on the planet for another 3,000 years until 1221 AD when the old St. Paul's Cathedral was finished, and even then they only beat the pyramid's height by about 5 meters. Now another wild thought to consider is that the first engineer may not even have been a homo sapien, depending how you look at it. See, it's thought that we inherited some of our early stone tools, weapons, weaponry, and even control over fire from early human species prior to Homo sapiens. As amazing as it is that ancient humans may have designed tools as far back as 700,000 years ago, I don't personally consider this engineering as I don't see it as applying a studied scientific understanding of the world to quote engineer anything. But that's just me, and I do respect the thought that this could be considered some form of engineering. Now you might be in the camp that thinks you can't even be the true first engineer unless the word even exists. So let's talk about that word. See, the common belief is that engineer stems from far long ago with the word gene, which means born or to produce, come into being. Though the word is also thought to have ties to ingeniare, which influenced the English word for an engine. So come the 1300s, there was a word engender, which was a verb to engine something. And somewhere around this time, we know the word engineer starts getting used for something like a constructor of military engines. Which this gives a hint to why the first engineering discipline, so to speak, could be considered military engineering, where scientific understandings were applied to complex military machines, engines, and civil structures. So here we are in the 1300s, and the problem here now lies in that my research, I couldn't find anyone referred to by name as an engineer for another 400 years. So this brings us to Mr. John Smeaton, a British fella who all articles point to being the first person referred to as a civil engineer in the early to mid 1700s. But the weird thing is, I can't find anyone earlier in history who, while they were alive, were referred to as an engineer. So if you find proof of someone earlier being referred to as an engineer in their lifetime, let me know and I'll throw it in the description of this video. So from my research, this would make John Smeaton the earliest recorded engineer by title. And Smeaton is famous for many things, but notably he improved the efficiency of the steam engine, he developed modern cement which is used in his genius design for a lighthouse, and this cement's chemical properties allowed for it to set or harden while submerged in the water. Now that lighthouse I mentioned, called Eddystone Lighthouse, was the third attempt at putting a lighthouse on these dangerous rocks. The first was called Winstanley's Lighthouse, and it only lasted five years before it was destroyed in a storm. Then came the Rudyard Lighthouse, which stood a good 46 years before it burned down. But then came John Smeaton's attempt, and his lighthouse was completed in 1759, and it was in operation until 1887, so over 120 years. And even then, it was still functional. It was just decided that the erosion of the base rocks was becoming too concerning, and so they put it out of commission. Later in John's life, he founded the official Society of Civil Engineers in 17. 
1771. So with the option of John Smeaton added to the list of possible engineers, does anyone still have an issue with any of these options? Or have we covered all the basis? Um, well, I don't consider someone an engineer unless they graduated from a recognized engineering school. Okay then, so let's discuss the first engineering school then, why don't we? The French name for this school was... École des Ponts et Chaussées which basically translates to the National School of Bridges and Roads. And this would be the first school that can be considered an engineering school, and it was founded in 1747. The earliest named graduate of this school I could find was, and I'm going to attempt to pronounce this this time, Jacques Henry Bernardin de Saint-Pierre. And he would have graduated in the late 1750s or early 60s, though history seems to indicate that the following people were students at the same time as him. Funny enough, the school did not have a single teacher, only a director of the whole school named Jean Rodolphe Peronet. And again, probably butchering that pronunciation, but funny enough to try. So the students taught themselves, they learned from each other, and they worked in outside companies or organizations on projects. And it could take anywhere between 4 and 12 years before the school considered you complete. He ends up graduating as what is basically considered a civil engineer, and he tried some various civil engineering roles, but had a rough time involving some family issues, love issues that got him fired, and eventually focused more on writing and botany. But he still very well may be considered the first engineering graduate. Now, I am curious who or what you, the listener, would consider to be the first engineer after you've learned this information. Do you consider it to be some pre-homo sapien who invented tools for starting a fire or a weapon of sorts? Was it the original unnamed human that made the wheel or invented a screw or some sort of engineering tool? Was it Imhotep, the likely designer of the first step pyramid who happens to be a named possible engineer? Or is it some unknown military engineer from the 1300s when the word engineer first started even being uttered aloud? Would you consider it John Smeaton, who it seems was the first self-proclaimed engineer? Or are you really picky and they needed to graduate some form of engineering school like Jacques Henry Bernardin de Saint-Pierre? Whatever your answer is, I'm curious, just like I was curious about this topic enough to make this video. Now, if you are curious about me for some reason and my thoughts on these issues, well, too bad. Okay, no. Gun to my head, my answer to who is the first engineer would probably go to an unnamed civil or military engineer from the 1300s when the word first came into use. I think the fact that the word made its way into our ever-evolving human language is evidence that this was the start of people's main role in life or profession or identity was that of applying science and knowledge to design solutions rather than necessarily physically building them, which is sort of what an engineer does, and the language around this time finally reflected that. But of course, people prior to this all across history clearly did engineering work. I'm just not sure if I can call them an engineer, but I digress. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this gate. And regardless, I hope to see you guys at the next gate.